good evening, everybody. This is Yarn and Aries with the Truth Talk, True Fears Radio Show. Uh, we're doing a special spotlight tonight on all sorts of artists, actually mainly authors and poets. I'm also an author myself. I write the uh, Taboo series. You can look me up on what I do is taboo dot com, and we have numerous authors and poets who are calling in tonight to plug their works. By being an author myself. I realize that folks don't get a whole lot of airplay that they norm- that they should get, like some of the mainstream media. So I try my best to look out for as many authors and artists as I can, because I was always looked out for in the industry myself. So, without further ado, let's go to the line, Aries, and see who we have talk- uh, coming in today. Hey everyone, this is Aries. We're gonna go straight to the lines. I just want to um, actually remind all of our call- callers who this may be your first time calling in or listening. If you want to join our conversation tonight, our dial-in number is 646-915-9923. If I, little, if I went a little too fast for you, that dial-in number again is 646-915-9923. Today is August the 23rd. This is the truth is, as Yandra said, and the best thing to do is to go to the phone line. Um, and our boards are lit up tonight, so I'm just going to take the first one that popped up on our screen. Hi, this is the Truth Is Caller. Uh, may I have your name and where you're calling from? In the area code 404, caller, you're on with the Truth Is. This is Wanda. I'm calling from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Wanda. How are you doing? I'm great. Hey, so... um. I actually received a message from you um, earlier this week in regards to your writings. Um, what type of, um, what part of the industry are you in? Are you a writer, editor, poet, um, publisher? Um, what do you actually, um, what type of work do you actually do? A new writer, first time writer. Oh, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, well tell us about your book, Plug Yourself. Okay, my book is called The Fight Within, and it um, I talk about the power of, forg- of forgiveness and how a person deals with the emotional, the spiritual, and the mental aspects of going through breast cancer. The media okay. focuses on the medical aspect. They don't go into after the medical part is over how you feel. <laughs> okay, well, tell us more about it. Okay, so you went through breast cancer? Yes, I was diagnosed um, last year. I've had three breast cancer surgeries. I'm currently nine months cancer-free. Yay! Oh, congratulations. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you. Thank you. So my book just goes, you know, talks about my journey in dealing with breast cancer. Um, I had a lot of personal issues that were going on at the same time in dealing with breast cancer. It's kind of raw. (laughs) Is this more of a... Uh, autobiography in a way Yes for you. It, It's for actually so yes. it, In a way it's kind of a non-fictional book it, It's uh, um, Yes it's a non-fictional So or Kind of explain do you have characters In the book or is it more of Just an autobiography Of you you know Going through the emotions and everything That you went through or do you have specific characters Set up playing different parts Within the book um, no, it's more of an autobiography describing, you know, the journey that I went through in dealing with breast cancer. Okay, tell us more. I want to. I, well, I have I have some questions for you about breast cancer. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, give me some. Okay, questions. Okay, so did you you've had the surgery? Did you have it? Did you have uh, breast taken away or? I had um, two lumpectomies, which is they, you know, cut out the tumor that which you know they take a portion of your breast away. I had two lumpectomies, and then I also had reconstructive surgery. Okay. And reconstructive surgery uh, cons- consists of? Um, after I had the two surgeries, I developed a real bad infection, which left a real big indention in my breast. And so the reconstructive surgery was more like a cosmetic-type surgery where they, you know, put more tissue to kind of make the breast look a little fuller, you know. Oh. Okay. okay, my question um, to you on this is, you know, we talk about your book, we talk about your writing. Did you start writing this book while you were going through your fight and your battle with this, or was this a product of, you know, afterwards, after, um, for what, for things now? I started writing the book while I was going through. One of my good friends in Maryland 
sent me a journal. I start, just started writing things down on little post-it notes. Hey, did you say the DMV? <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So okay. I started um, writing, you know, my thoughts, you know, when my doctor's appointments, going through my radiation treatment, and then I started giving breast cancer speeches to different groups. And at, after each speech, people would tell me that I needed to put what I talked about into a book. And so that's how the book came about. I have a question. What is the greatest thing that you learned about yourself while writing this book? As far as, um, I want to go on strengths and weaknesses. What did you find to be your greatest strength and your weakness? Would you mind elaborating on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I found out my greatest strength was to be able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's very hard, you know, to talk about all the emotions you go through, the surgeries. I didn't know anybody who had breast cancer, so I didn't. Oh, wow. This is first. I'm the only one in my family who's had it, you know. So this was very hard, you know. Um, my weakness, I would say, was bearing all because there's a lot that I talk about. You talk about your deep thoughts, how you really feel. You, how you question God? Why did you get it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and no one else in your family has it. Where can we look for your book at? Where can we find it? Um, my book should be released within sixty to ninety days, and it will okay. be on Amazon dot com and Barnes and Noble dot com. Okay. And I'm okay, going to are you get, I can also get it on Kindle. Are you self publishing? Yeah, I'm, I'm with a publishing company in Maryland. They're called Unlock Publishing House. Okay. Okay, uh, do you have a website? I don't have a website, but I have a face Facebook page. Okay, can you plug your Facebook page? Yes, the Facebook page is The Fight Within, and then in parentheses it's the small C for the copyright symbol, and it's all rights reserved. She mentioned something yonder. Can you explain being a publisher, I mean being um, a self-published artist and writer yourself, what is the importance of copywriting? For some people that may be new getting into the business, for some that may want to get into writing or poetry and so forth, can you explain the importance of copywriting? That's the first step you should take. Once you get the book idea in your head and you write five, six, or seven pages, you should copyright. You can do this online now. You don't have to come to D.C. anymore to do it. You can do it online at uh, librarycongress.gov. Uh, go up on copyright, and I think it's it's one of it. I think it's it's between forty five and sixty dollars. Put a credit card number in there, and they'll send you the copyright right there in your hand directly. It'll be with to you within the next fifteen minutes. So is that copyright that you get at that day and time or whatever, is that only good for that one book? And what, But what are you, I guess my first question is, what are you copywriting? That's the first question. And the second question is, is there a time limit on the copyright? Um, you know, say, for instance, Wanda is writing The Fight Within. What if she wants to write a second, a part two? Does she have to go get that copyrighted? Yeah, each, each book has to be copyrighted, yes. Each book has to okay, be copyrighted. Well, Wanda, I have a question for you, a personal question. Okay, you said yes. you went through breast cancer, right? Yes. Okay, question for you. Were you in a relationship while you were going through breast cancer? I was going through a divorce while I was going through breast cancer. Okay, so he's no longer in your life. Correct. Okay. Question for you. Okay, so now you're, I don't know if you're dating now. How does this affect you with the rest of your relationships afterwards? It affects a great deal because, you know, you, you're always wondering, you know, if you meet someone, you know, you start talking, you enjoy their conversation, when do you tell that person, you know, I've had breast cancer, you know, because your breasts are a sexual part of your body. I mean, exactly. That, let's, you know, and men like breasts. I mean, let's put that out there. All right, that's so, true. We, we hey, do. We, we like those. Right. But, hey, you said the key word there. You said the key word men. A real man, it doesn't matter how it, you feel. It won't it. matter. Exactly. It, but you, you still have those thoughts in your mind, like, will mm -hmm. this person, what is a deal breaker? You know, what, will this person overlook that part, you know, be like, okay, you're cancer-free, everything's fine, you know, it's cool. Or will that person be shallow? No, I don't want to date this person. Breast cancer may come back. How would I deal with that? 
No, but that's not. But from a man's point of view, I mean, from what, I'm not gonna say from every man's point of view. From a, my man's point of view, for me, that's not a deal breaker. That's great to know. I mean, mm-hmm. really, because there's so much. I mean, once you get a certain age, there's so much more to you than just your body. I mean, if, if I'm just asking exactly. for your body, I shouldn't even be. We shouldn't even be together. Exactly. Callers, once again, and those that are listening to us live online or that have dialed in. Um, this is the truth is with Yonder and Aries. This week we're focusing on writers, authors, poets, everybody within the book world arena. Our dial in number is six four six nine one five nine nine two three. Right now we're wrapping up well, we're actually speaking with Wanda, who actually has a book that's actually, um, it will be released within the next 60 to 90 days. And the title of the book is The Fight Within. Feet. The Fight Within. Um, Wanda, is there anything else that you want to say to our listening guests? We have, Yonder, I just want to warn you, or not really warn you, but let you know, we have a list. Um, it's a full house tonight. I want to okay, try to good, get around. Good, I want to good. try to move it around. So mm-hmm. I want to see one. Is there any last words? Any words of inspiration? Anything that you want to leave our talking audience with tonight? Um, yeah, just some inspiration. Um, while I was going through this journey, I learned the power of forgiveness, um, especially going through the divorce. And you know, you can't hold on to resentment. You have to let go. You have to forgive. That's also a part of your healing, not only your spiritual healing, but also your part of your physical healing as well. Because we all know stress can cause certain things to go wrong in your body. So you you just have to be free and just know that you are stronger than you think. You just never know how strong you are until something comes in your life that will just make you just stand up and be a fighter. Okay, Wanda, can we ask for you to do something for us, especially if we don't access a whole lot? Can we have you to call back? Um, we can do a special show about you on your book once it hits the street. Yeah, we can do spotlights. Honored. Yes, because I think that I think that we really could do a whole lot of good with what you're doing and help you promote where you're going at and help folks to get through it. Thank you, thank you. I'd be honored to call back. So you uh what you can do is once you you can hit us on uh Truth is on the Facebook, um, email us some contact information, we'll get back to you, we'll set up a special show for you once your book hits the street and we'll get you some sales too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Wanda. Thank, well, thank you, for you Wanda McCarty, and I'm so glad you survived cancer and go on and live your life and your relationship and trust me, a real man ain't ain't tripping off your did it. <laughs> oh, you're so silly. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, Wanda. All right, Yonder, we're going to take another call. Caller, you're on with the truth is. Uh, would you mind tell, telling us your name and when you're, where you're calling from? Caller, area code 718. Oh, hi. This is Donald Peoples. I'm sorry, hi, everybody. Hi, um, hey, Who's Aries. Hey, hey, Yonda. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm actually good. I'm very good. Um, how are you two doing tonight? Oh, we good. We good. We're so good to hear from you. Yeah. The same here too. <laughs> yeah. Any, 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 anything new coming out? Anything we should uh, be looking for? Well, matter of fact, um, as um, y'all know that I had a book, um, Hitting Fires, that was published by Deja Vu Publications. Um, right here back, in front of me. Yeah, back in 2009, and um, I went through that, um. I went through that experience, and I really didn't last. Um, I can't say not last, but I wasn't really in the industry that long the first time around. Um, it was an education, um, and I'm not going to really go into it um, fully on the um, on the radio show. Well, I, I give it to them quick, Don. It was dirty. It was stinky. They ain't treat you right. Is that, that, is, is that it in a nutshell? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just didn't want to go into the whole um, right, but I the whole soap opera of it. Right. Is, what you, you know, guys are speaking about is the business side. So we're we're talking about the business side. Yeah, I really didn't know too much of the business side of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I basically thought everything was going to be done for me as as far as distri- um, the distribution of the book. Um, the book's going to be put into where they needed to be put at, and it didn't really happen the way that I thought that it was going to go. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Um, yonder. Do you yes. have anything that you can offer on that, Donald? What are some lessons learned? Let's try to get into that part of it because these are things that new and aspiring writers, authors, poets 
we need to know the business side. And Yonder, I remember you saying people really don't tell you that side when you first get in. That's why the biggest thing I do when I get in the industry is Donald will tell you, we've talked a number of times, is I say do all this yourself. I mean, I know we claim that everybody claimed that we broke at that time, but you even broke it when you get your stuff away. <laughs> I mean, so, really. That's true. When you say broke, approximately, let's say Aries has a piece of work here saved in my computer that I want to get out. Before I even think about putting it out, Donald and Yonder, approximately how much would it cost to really start writing? What what is what are the true numbers? I would give you a round number about three grand. Three thousand dollars? Yes, and that that includes all your editing, printing, front cover, and then you got a tour somewhere. Okay, Wanda mentioned, the previous um, author that um, joined us earlier, she actually mentioned that she was going through a publisher. Yonda, I know you've mentioned in the past that you've done self-publishing. What's the difference of the cost and things like that in the business side of the house, you know, with regardless which way you... Which if you go through a publisher, that are, and if they're not one of the big boys, one of the big boys, you're talking about the random houses, those guys like that, and first of all, they don't look at you until you sell six, seven hundred thousand. I mean, you got to sell something crazy before they even look at you. I mean, but when you go through a smaller one, okay, they you have a relationship and you're splitting your profits with them. And sometimes they own your copyright. And so if they own your copyright, they can make a million dollars off you, and you can make fifty thousand. I mean, that's those numbers are never equal, and they're never what you need them to be. So I suggest instead of being mad and upset along the way because we all got there, that you just keep pushing away. As I first did for book, my first book, I wrote first, then I started getting editors. I, I learned it the hard way because I started reading up on it, but I basically did everything myself. The only thing I didn't do myself was editing, but I did the front cover. Everything I did, a piece at a time, it was $500 for this and $500 for that and $500. Until I did everything myself, I wouldn't put my book out. I wouldn't give anybody a piece of it. So, Donald and Yonda, mm -hmm. what are the steps that one needs to take? Okay, so I understand what you just said. Yonder with, you know, there's different pieces you have to put together. Where does one start? Um, are you talking about um with the whole writing the manuscript um process? Okay, I have my manuscript. I mean, I guess that would be um part one in books for dummies or writing for dummies, part one is you have to write your work. So that's done. So yes, after um, I write it. Yes, after yeah, after you write your work, then um you get your copyright. Um go get it from the from the US copyright office in DC. Okay. I mean like um Yonder was saying earlier on, it's gonna cost between forty five and six um sixty five and you can um you can do it now online. Um 'cause matter of fact you can't you you can't even print the blank application anymore. You have to fill everything out online yep. anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you can either pay for it through credit card, or you can still send a money order in. But everything has to be filled out online now. So you, you, um, you do that, and that's going to take a couple of months, um, for the copyright to even take in, into effect. So while um, that's going on, I guess the advice would be that I'm not a writer, but if it takes that long for the copyright to go through, the best advice that I mean, you guys either agree or disagree would be for that writer to actually perfect their work to try to do some of the editing themselves? Would this be a good time to do that? I don't suggest you edit yourself. You just just, just be a writer at that time. Editing needs to be done by a professional. Okay. Yes, yes, um, yes. Everyone you know that, Donald, because we, we, most writers aren't editors. Most editors aren't writers. They, It's like a different genre to walk down in your own way. I mean, because you don't think your stuff is need to be edited. <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> Everybody needs an editor. I tried telling authors who came into the game that they needed to be edited. I got attitude and I got shade and I'm like, Okay, I'm just trying to tell you that um because the readers and the um fans are going to tell if your work is shoddy or not. And you really uh -huh. do not want to put anything shoddy. Everything has to do with presentation. The stuff has to be edited. I don't care who you are. Even the even the big cats have to get their work their works edited. James Patterson, Jackie Collins, exactly. Preach, would have preach, Don, or preach, and even they have I can to get their works edited. I can give you a personal story. I have a good friend. Won't mention her name, but a good friend in the industry who, when we both were writing, we started out together years ago, and we both were writing, and I had pushed her, pushed the author to say, "Hey, go to edit, editing," and stop. Along the way, 
she they didn't and as time went through they ended up getting a big deal they were on big radio shows from Russ Paul to uh what's the girl in New York Wendy Williams and mm-hmm. things that nature being flying then flown back and forth around around the states and when they finally got the chance to get the big deal they said um I bumped to one day and they said uh, I said so when you putting book two out they said no I can't book, put book two out yet I said why they said I need to redo book one because it's a mess. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And I was like, this is the conversation we had in probably 18 months before. And she was like, you told me. I said, I wasn't trying to tell you to hurt your feelings. I was trying to tell you so when you get to the big place, you can walk in the door with no problem. But she was everyone, redoing her first book. All of Everyone listening, I'm sorry to interrupt you, um, interrupt you, Yonder, but this is The Truth Is with Yonder and Aries. Our dial-in number is 646-915-9923 for anyone that wants to join the conversation. Tonight we're spotlighting all of you authors, writers, the book world. And for those up and coming or those interested in getting into writing and doing books and so forth, um, our conversations tonight are going to be with people that are um, aspiring writers, we have Don Peebles that is actually on the line with us. We have Yonder. So if you have questions, please feel free to dial number six four six nine one five nine nine two three. Go ahead, Yonder. Well, right. Don, I want to get to. Uh, you said you are you reputting uh, your your last book out, or you are you going to the next one? Are you are you going to reput it out on your own publishing company, or how are you going to do that? Um, well, right now what I'm doing, um, I was asked to come back to the publishing to that publishing com- um, company, um, but. Um, it, but the publisher is going through a new direction in her life in the direction of the company. I have so a it question. looks like Go ahead. So at this time why wouldn't you self publish? I oh that's what I I am gonna do that. Um I'm gonna do that um between going going back to school. I'm I'm in library school now, so Ooh. basically um I am gonna self publish my works on my on my own. I have a lot of projects that I do wanna self um um, self publish. I want to do, I want to do that first novel over again so that I can, it's I can have, I, 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 I can, can have the, the control. Um, for you guys that are just joining us, we have Donald Peebles Jr. on the line with us, the author of Hidden Fires. Although you know Donald did when he joined the call, he said there were when he came on the show tonight, he said there were some minor issues or whatever, but I still want to plug this book, Donald. This was like a I great agree. That was, Donald, you put your foot in that thing. Yeah. Thank so for you, you to say much. that for you to say that you're gonna redo it, I'm waiting for I it. I don't know I'm, what you redoing. What you um, redoing? But guess Basically. what? No, but wait, let let him redo it because we know it's only gonna get better. He's gonna Ooh. add a little bit more fire. A um, but you um, but you um, but you know what? Yeah, I may not redo that particular one, but I am going to continue um the series. I'm going to make it into. I'm going to I'm going to do maybe three more books of that series because it it was originally a series in my head when I had created the story in the first place. Um, the second one actually is going to be a sequel. Um, for those who who have read it, you know the character um Charlotte. Yes. Okay, the one the um the young stripper. Who um who who has issues with her mother? Yes, and she goes on to New York into the porn industry. Mm-hmm. I am going to be doing um this sequel on on her exploits in the porn industry in the San Fernando Valley. Oh, okay, okay. Um, because I I mean I'm doing I'm doing the research now um for it. I was gonna have her doing it in New York, but um thanks to a source of mine. Um, who um, who had corrected me that the leading porn industry is in the San Fernando Valley, not in New York, where it's a it's a bunch of S and M bondage porn. That's not the porn which a lot of people um, are really known um, really know about. So I'm gonna hey, take everyone listening. I just want you to listen to him. Did you for those that want to join or get into the industry? Did you hear the word research? He said he's doing his research. So this isn't something that's just thrown together, not some mess. He's actually putting, as Yonder said, his foot into it. So please listen to this, young fella, please. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm going to put Charlotte into the porn industry in the San Fernando Valley, and just I want to kind of do it as a cautionary tale. I want to show young girls that getting into um, the porn industry 
the um, video vixen industries, the stripper industries, they're not, they're not what they see on TV. It's a lot Come of on, Donald, stuff. Now, now you talking. Now that, you um, talking. that goes behind the scenes, and a lot of these young it's girls. There's so much more to that. It's, it's not yeah. pretty. It's not it's, pretty. It's and they don't make a whole lot of money. Yeah, no, it's a lot of ex, 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 exploitation um, mm-hmm. in that industry. Um, the white porn stars make much more than black women. We yep. can um, um, we can watch J- Jada Fire, Pinky, and all of our favorite black porn actresses doing these stuff, but it's a lot of racial and sexual exploitation um, committed against young, young, um, young black women. And I mean, that's been that's been going on since slavery anyway, but. Exactly, and um, gay porn you, actually makes more money than everybody. Right, <laughs> you know, and the fact that um, um, you, you have this young nineteen-year-old girl going into this industry, and she's thinking that that what she's going to get out of it is is going to be more than what she really bargained for. Um, so I want to do that because I was gonna, I was trying to figure out how I was going to do this um the sequel telling the two stories going back and forth between the porn industry and what was going on in the um in the Long Island um scene. But that's too many characters. See, when you're writing a book you gotta be careful how many characters you're using. If you you're writing a manuscript and you're writing too many characters, people are gonna get confused, people are gonna get bored. That's so right. And then they lose themselves. Like you yeah. said, they lose themselves. They don't they wanna fight they and they need a villain somewhere. They need somebody to love somebody to hate. Right, right. Guys, and you, for those listening, this is the truth is with Yonder and Aries. We actually have um, Mr. Don Peebles on the line with us, the author of Hidden Fires. Our dial-in number tonight is six four six nine one five nine nine two three. Don and Yon- Donald and Yonder. Um, I'd like to. We have a caller that's been holding for a while. Area code two one five. Um, this is the young lady. I think I spoke to her earlier, and um. She's been on hold. Yes. You're on. You're on with the truth is. Would you like to add to the conversation tonight? Yes, I would. And this thanks is for the invitation. Yes. And yeah. um, would you like to plug your book or plug your services within the writing world? Um, first and foremost, I just want to say to all first-time authors that you have only just begun the journey. And what is your no name, Paula? Just in, just in case those that missed your name, um, what is your name again and where you're calling from? Yes, my name is Francine Elizabeth Natal, and I'm calling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, and continue to what the advice that you were given to first-time authors? Yes, uh, to all first-time authors, you've only just begun. What do you mean and by that? No Elaborate. Elaborate, yes. Um, To accomplish authorship, first and foremost, takes wit. It takes determination, strong determination, because you find you're not the first and you're not going to be the last. Preach, Francine, preach. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Brother Yonder. (laughs) And it's a very competitive uh, profession and I would have to say to anyone that's venturing out into it with very little experience or even uh, maybe you haven't done the research first and foremost you want to take a moment and pause put everything on rest and do the homework do the research talk to people who have already taken the trip and the journey and realize that you have to personalize the experience and make it your own. You have to own it. Being an author will only be as much as you're willing to invest in to becoming an author. So, and I guess, you know, one of the other questions that comes up, this is for everyone on, I'm going to say the panel tonight, because I feel like we had some Super studs on this um, line tonight, on the call tonight. But one thing that comes up is people often wonder, and, you know, it's all about money. So listen to what you're saying and what everyone else has said tonight. This isn't something that you get in if you're looking for a get-quick-rich type of scheme either. Not at all. No. And Francine, can I jump in for a second? First, I yes. want to introduce Francine for another aspect. Mary Francine became friends because Francine is a mentor author. I mean, she... It's not just writing just to write. She has a story to tell, and she shares who she is with the industry, and she shares what she's doing, and that makes it like when you first talk to Francine, you like, I feel like I've known her all my life. 
So what type of work? What? What? Um, do you mind me calling you Francine? Miss Francine, what is your? Um, you can call can me you give Fran. Us, Fran. Oh, thank you. <laughs> can you actually give us the titles or the names of some of your work that's out there for you know people like myself who you know want to go and learn more about you and read more about your work and your art? What yes, are some of your I titles? Uh, my very first published book is entitled "Every Rose Has a Thorn: A Collection of Poetry." Uh, that book is available online for purchase. You can go to Amazon.com, uh, BuyBooksOnTheWeb.com. Uh, my second published work is entitled The Assortment, A Collection of Poems. Uh, that also is a book of poetry. Um, I pretty much have a signature identity in my authorship right now, and that's been poetic works, literary works. And, so of course, right you're going to grace us with some. Yeah. <laughs> I need to spread my wings a little more, like, you know, Brother Yonder's helping me out in, the, in that. <laughs> well, Fran, can you do, like, can you do um, myself and our listeners and callers a uh, favor tonight? Um, for those listening, this is the truth is. Um, this is a place for people like us. Our dialing number is 646-915-9923. Fran, can you yes. actually give us one line? From one of your poems, like your strongest line, one of the strongest lines in, like, maybe your favorite poem. Can you give us a little sample? Give us a little bit. Give us a little bit. The title is Remind Me of My Past. Elders, give us hope. Trample down the mist of variance, that false glimmer of extravagance. The apartheid that swelters in our neighborhoods to infuse strife among the brotherhoods. Chew away at the ill will that lodges its talons upon us like an angry fisherman's net to entangle our guts till all of our essence leaks away into the dust. Elders, give us hope. Oh, wow. Okay, and this piece of work can be found where? That uh, poem is in the second published work or book of poetry, entitled The Assortment, A Collection of Poems. And that was actually published through iUniverse.com. But you can go to Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, Borders.com, and the book is available there. And, Fran, I have to get up to Philly soon. And, Donald, also, you're in New York. You definitely need to uh, get in contact with Francine. I mean, really... Uh, motivator knows everybody in the industry and just a good person to know when you need someone to call to and ask a question about this industry when it drives you crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I I just subscribed to you on um, on Facebook. Oh, you did? Yes. Wonderful. Yes, yes, to all the listening audience, hit me up on Facebook, friend request. I love to help our people. Literary enthusiasts are my favorite people. So if you love to write, you love the arts, you embrace the arts and liter, 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 literacy as a whole, I'm, I'm waiting for you. Looking forward to, to communing with you. Thank you for calling in and joining us tonight. I'm Yonder Don, Donald. Website, one more time, please, Francine. I'm sorry, repeat Love that. your website again. Yes, um, you can go to www.facebook.com. Francine Natal, that's N A T A L Natal. And for our listeners, we want to let you know we're going to put one hour after the show is over. We actually put this actually not only on the True Fears website, we actually put them on YouTube also. So if you don't, if you miss something somewhere along the letter, along the way with a letter or something or a name, you can listen to this again and tell your friends about it. You can forward it around. So right after the show, it will be posted. One hour after the show, it will be posted on the True Fears website, on Facebook, and then um, by tomorrow morning, it will be posted also on YouTube. And our boards are still lit up. We're going to add another caller um, to the show tonight. Caller, you're on with The Truth Is with Yonder Aries and Mr. Donald Peebles, area, area code 678. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hey, my name is uh, Ty Johnson. I'm calling from Atlanta, and I have a new book out. Um, it's under K.F. Johnson, and it's called um, Behind Closed Doors. 
Mm, I like that title. Come on, tell me something about it. Behind Closed Doors. Talk, tell us about that one. Okay, well, um, I'm a new author. It's only been out for about three weeks, and it's been doing pretty good so far. Um, it's about the lives of a brother and a sister, and they're manipulative and promiscuous and chaotic relationships and um, dark family secrets that they discover after their father's mysterious death. Mm. I like that. That's yeah. on my what was, the, what was the inspiration behind this book? Um, well, really, I, I've always been writing. I'm just um, a creative person, and I uh, have a large imagination, Um I've been doing it since I was little, and I had a story in my mind about um, the brother and sister, and then I just had to think about things that would make a story interesting. And, you know, you just you can just have characters. You have to have a storyline, and, and why would anybody care about these characters? And so I just developed that story. Now, what did you find to be one of your most challenging um, things to work through when writing your novel? Um, time. It took me about 10 years to write this book. In between that, I had a son. I went back to school and got my master's degree. Um, I have a bachelor's uh, degree in psychology from Spelman College. And just over time, you know, I just had so many things that happened. And uh, when you're stressed, you get writer's block. So I had to Say take a again. break and then go back. Say that again. When you're stressed, you get writer's block. <laughs> Right, exactly. You know, so I had to wait for inspiration to be able to get in the right mindset in order to get back into my characters. And young writers, listen to what she said. She had to wait to get inspiration back. Don't rush your work. If it take 10 years, take 10 years. Do not rush. Good work can't be rushed. No, so do not rush your good work. I mean, really, you have a most likely you have a, a New York Times bestseller now because you waited to do it the way you need to do it and the time you need to do it. Well, Hi. that would be great, <laughs> Miss Johnson. I'm Kai. Yeah, how do you pronounce your name again? Call me Kai. It's Kai. My full Kai. name is Kaita Johnson, but I, my writing name is KF Johnson because of you know Kaita. A lot of people won't be able to get that. So, um, but you can call me Kai. That's that's typically what I go by. Give us or give our listening audience, those listening, one piece of major advice you think they should have? Hmm. I would say do your research before you publish. I I self-published myself. Um, And like I said, my book's only been out for three weeks. I think it's had a lot of progress in uh, in that short amount of time. But um, I did a lot of research beforehand some things I still am in the process of learning. So I say do as much research as possible. Don't rush your work. I did rush a little bit once I was finished. I was so excited that I was finished that I was ready to publish it immediately, and there were still some kinks in it. I needed to call it back and republish it again because there still has some errors in it. So you can't let excitement, you know, cause you to overstep some key factors in publishing. So true. We're just talking, man, Donna, we just had a conversation about editing. If you listened earlier, we had a conversation Mm -hmm. about editing, how folks are not uh, editing their own work. Everybody wants to be everything Mm -hmm. to their own book. Only thing you can be is the writer. You can't be the editor. You don't need to be on the front cover. You can't do nothing (laughs) else. You just Mm -hmm. need to write. I I agree. Um, I I ended up having to get an editor because of that. That is exactly what I found out. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because there are just some things I think you just don't see. You don't. You just don't see on, on your own. Um, and and through all the process of writing, you really don't have the time to go back and do that. Someone else should be doing that while you're trying to do all the other preparation. You can't even see so, it no more. You you don't even realize the mistakes that are in it, and they're obvious. I mean, because mm-hmm. you've seen this work 25 times. You read you read it 25 times before you gave it to yourself again. Then you read it 50 times as editor. So you're three people at one time now. Right, you need some new eyes sometimes to pick out some things that you might not have realized. You might even have some inconsistencies in your story that you didn't didn't recognize, you know. So, you know, it is important to have new eyes look at it, which I did have other people reading it at the time. And, um, you know, I've, I've been hustling, you know, like I, another author, um, I can't remember which one that you all just had on, maybe Donald um, was saying that, you know, your job is not done once you publish it. Like I've been hustling to get, 
book sold. I've been posting on Facebook. I've been joining authors' books. I've been talking to. What is your um, Facebook page? Um, would you mind plugging your fa- Facebook page for the listening audience? Sure, sure, sure. My um, Facebook page is um, KF Johnson Books. So I uh, think just look it up under KF Johnson Books. I also I have my own web page, which is www.kfjohnsonbooks.com. Um, I'm on Twitter, so they can follow me on Twitter at KF Johnson Books. Um, I just recently, today, as a matter of fact, um, got my book uh, put into Nubian bookstores in South South Lake Mall um, here in Georgia. Oh, cool! Um, oh, good. It's, yeah, just today I got. I'm excited about that. Um, but it, it's on Amazon, and that's where it's been selling so far. It's on Amazon and paperback, and um, for Kindle download. I've been hustling on Facebook. I've been hustling um, on Google. I looked up any book clubs or anything. Yeah, I have a couple of interviews. Do do book clubs, do radio, and one of the things, too, when you start getting a Facebook friends, authors might be mad at me when I say this, but you'll understand after I say it. Don't make authors your friends unless they're your friends. You need readers. Authors, as you understand this, when you're an author, you don't read. You don't read anymore. Yeah, what you I wait. did, what I did, my Facebook friends, luckily I have a, a ton of Facebook friends already, mm-hmm. so... A lot of them, I, I, people didn't even know I was writing a book. So once mm-hmm. I I posted that I wrote a book, they were shocked. So they were, you know, very supportive, and people started posting it on their pages good, for me good. and reading it. And, you know, I got a lot of support. I was in tears almost because I was just so um, happy that people were so supportive. I went on um, Spellman's website. I, I got on Twitter, which I, I typically don't do, but I got on Twitter um, I did start following some authors because what I did is I got on their Twitter so that I could see who their readers were for authors that right, are similar genres. You want readers, you don't want writers, you want readers. Research, she mm-hmm. did her research. This is all part of the research. You yep, know? all part of the research. Yep. And you've done an excellent job. Like I said, you want readers because one of the biggest things I've learned, like I said, I support all writers actually from Donald's book. Donald will tell you from Donald to France saying I'm, I'm the biggest buyer of books, but I don't read books anymore. Because once you mm. start writing, you can't look at nobody else's ideas. Right, right. Everyone listening, yeah. this is the truth. Is. You have to be on vacation to read another book. You cannot be that writing true. while you're trying to – you cannot read while you're writing. This that is, is the so truth. You know what, that, that's what was making me go back to writing because I was reading other authors' books, and I was mm-hmm. like, I need to get on my book because I could do this. Or I, you know, <laughs> I need to do that. Well, well, can you both do me a big favor right now? She doesn't realize I'm going to do this. Can you encourage Aries? Aries is a writer who has not, who would not finish her book out. Oh, gee. <laughs> Aries, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. it's the best feeling ever. I mean, I even had to. My book um, does have some sex in it, and it does have some vulgarity in it. So when I published it, I, you know, my parents didn't know I was writing a book either. So I had to tell them because I was so excited, and I, I gave them acknowledgments in the book. I had to say, "Don't read past the acknowledgments. Like this right, book right, is not right. for you." So, I mean, you you can't let any fear stop you from doing it. You have it's to believe in yourself. Fear. For me, it's not that. It's the time, like you all spoke about. And, like, one thing that you actually said was it took you that time. Um, mm-hmm. Yonda knows we have a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we have a lot of stuff popping off right now. And it's that time where I'll find time to write, and then I'll start writing, but then something pops up, and I have to get in that writer's mood I, I have to get into mm-hmm. that mood to give it all and like you said I've sent him some stuff he said it's great I'm thinking it's yeah okay but he says it's good but it, it's I have to get into it and right now you know like, you have to make a decision I made a decision I, I decided that I was going to finish it this year I'm turning 40 this year and I was like you know what I've been writing this book forever. I keep finding things to do. I, I get on Facebook. I do a whole bunch of dumb stuff. Instead of finishing something say it, you better that is say supposed it. to be my passion, <laughs> instead of doing something that I could be proud of, that I can say, because I, I used to rap. I was in videos. I was in a few movie shorts. I used to act. I did a whole bunch of stuff. I was a jack of all trades, but I wasn't mastering anything. Mm. So I said, you know what? I have so many talents in different places, but I have to capitalize on one. You don't live forever, and you have to do something that you can look back and be proud of. And I was so proud when I published that book, and it was my name on it. It was my hard work. And when people started coming back with their feedback, 
they're already saying, I want to hear the sequel. When is the sequel coming? Are you writing on the sequel? About that. And I that feels so good. This and, um, is the and truth also is, Aries. everyone, I, I got to plug this one. Just let me plug. This is the truth is, guys. Our dialing number is 646-915-9923. Guys, we're down to, like, less than 15 minutes, and I'm not ready for it to end, so we're going to have to... <laughs> Oh, we're going to have to do something, but um, let's try to get get it in. Okay, Donald, what were you saying? I was going to say Aries, um, as um, a part of finding time to do your um, book, um, there's one important thing that you need to do, and I really realized this on the weekend with my own self. you got to stay away from the negative family and the fair weather friends and the fake asshole. Come on, Donald, come on. Um, Because they're going to um, block you from doing what you got to do. you got to surround yourself with positive-minded People, positive minded authors, writers, readers, what have you, but you got to be around positive minded people who affirm you and affirm your goals and your dreams and your aspirations. And that was my thing. And I and I would say this to myself um, when Hidden Fires was out. I felt Hidden Fires could have been where it could it could have been, but I'm just going to really say that I had a lot of um, stuff from the personal, from the past. And, I, I mean, I don't care what we do, but if you have a lot of baggage from the past, a lot of um, cl- um, cloggage, blockage, mm-hmm. you're not going to go but for so far. So you got to let all of that stuff go and the people go. And once you do all of that, everything will start opening up and you will be able to get your book out there. We're going to add someone else to the call, guys. Like I said, the panel was full. Donald, I really appreciate that, and I took all that in, and I'm I'm going to use your advice. I'm yonder. I'm going to use your advice. Ty, I'm going to use yours. I mean, I'm, I'm going to use it. It's time. Like I said, you're talking to authors. Like I said, it's time. If you guys read some of the stuff that she's written, I was sitting there like, this yours? And you don't want to put this out? You're crazy. And this was four years ago. <laughs> Okay, caller, you're on with the truth is with Yonder and Aries. Did you want to join the conversation tonight? Area code 240, you're on with the truth is. This is Aries. Yeah, hey, this is Chris Daniel checking in. Hey, Chris, how you doing? What's going on, Yonder? I am good. I am good. Won't you go ahead and plug your work and tell everybody who you are <laughs> and, what you, and all about you? <laughs> what is your sure name thing. again? I'm Chris Daniel, the consultant in jeans, actually. And um, Yonder and I met through a friend a while back, a mutual friend, but my new book is called Consult in Jeans. Okay, well, tell so, us about it. <laughs> sure, absolutely. It's um, But, you know, let me just say this real quick. You guys have given me a lot of advice, so I think I'm going to go pull it back and redo it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all well, right. We, and see, we're big enough to understand where we stand in this industry. You know when you talk to other authors, you're like, okay, i got to come right. And that's good. And, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I took the approach of really writing a business book from a layman's perspective, basically. Um, you know, I got a dozen or so years in the consulting realm, and two years ago I walked away from a six-figure salary and started my own consulting practice. And, you know, it's not a boring business book. When most people hear consulting, they think, ah, okay, it's going to be 300 pages of stuff I ain't going to read. But what I actually did was I made it interactive, and I used client stories and testimonies to show how either using a consultant can, you know, help your business grow or becoming your own by doing some of the things in the book. So it's not a book you can just read and put down. You have to physically write in it to complete it. Okay, so you said, break that down again. You said you have to write in it. So it's like a, a journal for the business side. That's what you tell it, it's kind of Yeah, it's kind of like an entrepreneurial journal a little bit. Yeah. And what is the name of this book again? The book is called Consult in Jeans. When should we look for this to be out? Because this is something I want to pick up. Sure, sure. It's that. Um, it's actually. Um, it's on my website at consultantinjeans.wordpress.com. But like I said, you know, I think I'm gonna pull it back because you guys have given me some good things to go kind of add and probably get it re-edited again. Now, as um, Yonder offered out earlier, and this goes out to everyone that's calling or trying to dial in tonight, we can actually have you featured on one of our shows um, yes. once that is done. Um, that If that's something that you would like to do, please hit us up and let us know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things I want to do with everybody on the phone now, when you, t- while we're on the phone now, uh, while we're on the call right now, or later on, please email 
to our website on our message us on the website. Give us some contact information we got because what I want to do too is let's all do a book exchange each other. I have four books out myself, man. The Taboo right. Series, the fourth one, District Three. Let's do a book exchange so we all can get your books out. I can plug your book. Once we read each other's books, we all become plugging up. We become pluggers of each other's books. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. Just that's keep everybody's stuff out. Keep yeah, circulating. That's a great like idea. I we all write a different genre most of the time. Or even if we do write the same genre, I write something that Donald doesn't write. Donald writes something that I don't write. Ty writes something. Francine writes something. You write something else. Okay, let's all plug each other's books along the way. Shout each other out once or every month or something on, on the web page. I just read this out of Donald's book. This was hot. You got to pick this up. We can plug for each other. Right. Okay. That sounds like great. And, and that's, yeah. that's, that's, you know, part of having that family connection, because we don't do that enough. We do not uplift and actually promote and support each other enough, and we need to get into that more. You're right. I think one thing, Aries, I want to add to what you were saying, um, it took me about a year and a half to complete my book from from start to finish. It really should have took me about 90 days. And, that and sounds like someone else. You. Yonder, how long did it take you to write that first book? The first one I wrote in 40 days. Exactly. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Like, like uh, I think it was, it might have been Francine or someone else that said, once you make that decision that you're going to sit down and write it, you have to schedule time just like you schedule time for everything else. Exactly. Like, literally, to, you know, wake up an hour early and write. Like, wh- if it's supposed to be your passion, that's what you should do. And it, it, it took me about halfway through for me to hear that and for me to sit, really set my clock oh. an hour early. And after a couple weeks, it just became habit. So now that's just what I do. Okay, but let's build on this as well, though, guys. I mean, we're going to keep it real. This is the truth is. Everyone right. that has a good story may not be a good writer. Like, my story may be good, but I may not be the writer for that story. And in cases with that, um, what would happen in a situation like that where my well, story is a bomb, but I'm not a writer? I, that, no, that see, you know what? Write. You're not a writer until okay. you get a book out. But you right. are really a writer. You just don't know it. Ask anyone who I, any you of know us what? were never writer. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Aries. You got to come to that point where you don't really even care. You just Thank know you. that come on, this, come this thing inside of you got to come out. Once you get to that point, and nobody can help you get there, but once you get to that point, you're gonna be satisfied whether one person buy it or a hundred thousand people buy it. Honestly. Exactly. It has to be a passion from the bottom of your heart, and mm-hmm. just realize in any business that you get into, you're not going to please everybody. Right. I mean, there are going to be people that's going to love your work, and there's, there's going to be some people who are not going to like it. And But at the end of the day, you just got to know that um, that you have done a great job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, 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 down, I'm, guys. That's part, of, that's part of what took me so long to write it, the stuff that what you're going through right now. Okay. Chris, I want to yeah. thank you for dialing in. Um, any last words? you want to plug your work, plug your website, plug your Facebook page? I want to try to get some other calls that I've been holding here for a really long time since we're, like, <laughs> windling down on time. Okay, sure thing. Um, you can find me on Facebook at the number one, Chris Daniel, all one word. On Twitter, I'm at Consult in Gene. That's at C-O-N-S-U-L-T N. Jeans, J E A N S. And then on my blog site, consultant in jeans dot wordpress dot com. You know, I got a lot of videos, a lot of articles on there. You can just kinda of read up about what I do, the arena I play around in with, with entrepreneurs and uh, business leaders. And it's just a common sense approach to improvement. So thank you. Thank helps. you so much it. and thank you for calling in tonight. Um, Yonder and Don, we're down to like five minutes. Can you believe it? An hour has passed already. I want to get to some of these calls that have been holding for like almost an hour. Um, this is the truth is with Yonder and Aries. Area code three oh one, you're on the mm-hmm. line. Would you like to add to the conversation tonight? Sure. My name is Andrea Blackstone, and I know Yonder, so hello, and thanks for doing a great show. I've been listening to all the great advice for the new authors and aspiring authors as well. And, Angela, can you plug the uh, – this is Yonder. How you doing today? Can you plug what, what you've done? And Angela has some good stuff in the industry. Tell us about she has some bad stuff. Can you give us a little insight on what you know about the industry? Sure. I I mean, I've self-published um, my first two, and I really didn't understand, like Yonder was saying, that I was making pretty good progress. But sometimes when you see the other side of it, you realize how much of a business it really is, and it's caused me to pause a long time 
But my second two were, you will publish her. So my first one was Scheming Confessions of a Gold Digger. My second one was called Short Change. My third one, which was uh, through a publisher, um, was Nympho. And then my last was called Sex Fashions. And then I've done anthologies like... Do you have um, a website that you could actually um, have refer? I'm revamping everything, but I am on Facebook, and it's authoress Andrea Blackstone, and it's got a cover of one of my books, and I'd love for people to connect with me there. Thank you, and we will be posting this, and I will add notes to tonight's show to add a listing for all of our guests that have dialed in tonight with their contact information. I'll friend them as well. Um, The truth is, uh, our Facebook page is the truth is yonder Donald. I am like so sorry. We need to do this again, guys. We're gonna have yes, to do this once a month. Let me sh- let me do something before we get off the line. Angela, who just called in, it's some. It's, what's so good about this industry is you reach some people that you don't want to meet no more. Then you meet some people who are just <laughs> genuine. The day I met Angela, I mean, if you pull up on the website, you look up some of the bad, past history of her. She was actually on um, the show with Brian Gumble. This girl, that's how big she really is. I mean, really, she's so humble, but just good people and just school men industry. The minute I met her, we talked, and she gave me her actual phone number. <laughs> and just good people in the industry. I mean, really, you get to meet some really, really good folks who've actually been through this with the bigger publishers. I mean, like I said, she was on a show with Brian Gumble. I mean, you don't get any that's bigger big. than that on Inside Sports with Brian Gumble. How can you, she, yeah. Do that, Donald. Any last words you want to say before Yonder and I close it out this evening? Um, I just want to really just say as a word of advice, just for all of the writers, um, just write every single day, um, and read, um, books by your favorite authors, and just basically just believing, believing yourself, and don't let anyone tell you that you cannot do whatever it is that that you want to do. When it when it comes to writing and just have the passion. Thank you, thank you, and that kind of like sums it up for me as well, Yonder. Any closing remarks? Um, just thank you everybody for calling in. Sorry that we couldn't get everybody. We're gonna do this show again. Yes, this will be a show we do at least once a month, and yes. we're actually not just gonna do it on on air. We're gonna set up a spot where we can do this uh one weekend somewhere. We come your way, Donna, from New but York to. We don't need to just settle with writers, Yonder. Think about it. We have poetry with people that want to get into the music industry. We have general business. This can go yeah, so many different ways. Like a networking session once a month somewhere. Maybe we come to New York. Maybe we go to Philly. Do wherever. On, somewhere on the East Coast, West Coast. doesn't make a difference. But have us all together on the same page just trying to help each other. Yes. That's and what that's, it's all about. We can't do anything we'll help each other. Yep. That's what we gotta do. We gotta help each other, pull each other pull each other up, lift each other up. I mean, look, this was just like so beautiful tonight. I can't wait to listen to it myself, you know, because there's so much going on with working with the boards and everything, but we've got but to do this again. We've great. And thank you everybody for calling. I mean, please listen on live on uh, it'll be uh, posted on our website on Truth Is on Facebook within an hour. It'll be posted on uh, YouTube by tomorrow morning. But please tell folks about us. Let them know the good stuff we're doing. We're helping each other. And I think it's a great show. If I say so myself, I appreciate my co host, Aries. And thank you, everybody who called in. Donald, you know I got to get your next book. And we got to work together because that brother is the bomb. Yes, he is. And Yonder doesn't know I'm doing this, but post on our site, Yonder will actually list the steps needed for those inspiring writers and those that want to get into the business on what needs to be done. I'll have him, like I'm demanding him, he's going to have 10 steps, 10 golden rules that you need to follow if you want to get into the industry. So Consider it done. All right. And we're down. This is the truth. Is thank you to everyone that dialed in tonight. Everyone that listened online. Like Yonder said, this is going to be uploaded to all of our sites. I want you guys to have a blessed and pleasant week, and I look so forward to speaking to you all next week. Have a good week. Be good. <laughs>